Welcome to Sebastian Christian Church. We are so thankful that you've tuned in with us online. We are wanting to take this moment right now just to say happy Mother's Day to all the moms watching. We know that we cannot be with you in person, but please know that you are in our hearts and we celebrate with you today. Right now we're going to celebrate and worship Jesus. In Psalm 28, 6 through 7, it says, Praise the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me, and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. So if you're tuning in with us right now, no matter where you are, if you want to crank up the volume a little bit, if you want to stand up, you can sit down too, that's fine. But we are going to worship the Lord as one body, one church in this place and where you are. So let's do so now. Let's sing to him, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. There is power, power here in this hour. This hour, we're all together, together, waiting here as one. Sing that out, there's power. There is power, there's power, here in this hour, this hour. We're all together, together. Welcome to SCC. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Camille. And my name is Shay. If this is your first time tuning in, we thank you for choosing SCC's online gathering. We invite you to click the connect with us button in the chat window. Our desire is that you would feel valued and loved through this experience. Financial Peace University will begin online Sunday, May 10th at 6.30 p.m. For more information and to sign up, please visit our website or call the church office. 
Here at SCC, we desire, our desire is to love God and love others. And if you have decided to partner with us in spreading the gospel locally and globally, we invite you to prayerfully consider giving online by clicking the Give button in the chat window. If you have been encouraged by this online gathering, please click the Invite button in the chat box to share this experience with others. SCC staff and leadership are praying for you during this difficult time. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us with specific prayer requests or needs by emailing us at info at sebastian.church. Please continue checking your email for our weekly updates. We are so excited to connect with you today, and we invite you to continue to sing with us. There is a hope that washes the fear away. There is a peace that settles around us. It is your love that sets our hearts in place. But Father, we're on our knees with every heart beat. We bring you this offer. Lord, come and fill this place. Father, we're crying out. Spirit, we need you now. Glorious love surrounds us. Lord, come and fill this place. There is a king that reigns in victory. There is a mercy strong enough to save. We feel it rising up from the ashes. Oh, there is a love that overcame the grave.
And so, Heavenly Father, we are grateful this morning that we can worship you and know that you see us for our true value. We don't have to wonder and assume if we are of any worth in your eyes because your word tells us, Father, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made and that we are your prized possession. And so, Father, thank you for that comfort. Even in times like these where we feel isolated and separated from one another, God, we can find purpose and we can find value through you. But, Father, we are certainly looking forward to the day that we can gather again together as a church to see each other, to experience the fellowship of the body. And so, God, I pray for all the people worldwide who are missing and longing to be connected with their church families right now. God, you'd help us to hang in just a little bit longer until we can do that once again. And so, God, we are grateful today for all your blessings, God, even in the midst of storms and struggles and trials. And for many of us, there's some health concerns and financial concerns, God, and there's a lot of question and wonder about what's next for us. God, I pray that we would find comfort and purpose in you, in your word, in our time together with you. And through our FaceTime or Zoom meetings with one another, God, we can connect in ways that we can find that we are better together and we are better when we call upon your name to intercede on our behalves. So, Father, we do so now that you would unite and bond your church in moments like these, God, that we can experience your presence evermore. And so, Father, our hearts are ready right now. We've worshiped you. God, we've removed some things from our hearts that may have been clouding up what you may have to say for, to us today. So God, I pray for our pastor right now as he comes to give your message to us. God, that our hearts would be ready to receive it. And as we pray often around here, that we wouldn't just be hearers of your word, but we would put it into action and be doers. So give us the courage to do so, to live faithfully for you. And we pray all these things in the mighty and powerful name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you so very much for joining us here today. We are so privileged that you've chosen to tune in. And before we get started any further, I want to say thank you to all of our moms out there on this Mother's Day. Thank you, moms, for everything that you do for us. You know, I really think that this brand new series that we're launching is going to speak to you, especially you moms, because of just how life is sometimes for you. You know, I can remember in the first grade, my teacher was Mrs. Cook. And oftentimes in the first grade, she would have us do these writing exercises, and she would tell us to get out our wide margin paper, our our papers that had the the big wide margins, and and she would tell us, now I want you to practice your alphabet and your, your numbers, and I want you to keep it in the margins. And that's when my blood pressure went up, that's when my stress level went up, because Frankly, my handwriting is bad. It just isn't very good. In fact, you've never received a handwritten note from me because I just don't do them. I type out everything. My handwriting is just flat awful. And in the first grade, my coordination was just terrible. And so my letters were awful. My numbers looked awful. And so when she would say margins, it just really really caused a lot of anxiety in my life. Well, that's where we're going to be going these next few weeks, is we're going to be talking about margins, because the secret to getting more out of life is having the margins in place that we can live in a way that God has intended us to live. Margins are so very important, because our culture, our culture encourages us to live as if we have no limits. It's just go, go, go all the time. It's, it's moving at light speed. It's going, it's going in overdrive. You know, we've got full schedules. We've got empty bank accounts. We, we do as much as we can. And we speak.
spend as much as we can. And we go over in all of those areas. We try to acquire as much as we can. All in the effort to get as much out of life as possible. It's what we do as Americans, isn't it? I've done it. You've done it as well. Well, often, running at maximum capacity. The longer that we do that, the more problems we're going to have in life. Because it leads to burnout. You know this. You know that you can't possibly go full speed all the time. That it will burn you out. And that burnout includes damaged emotions. It includes damaged finances. It includes damaged and hurt relationships. And if you have ever felt trapped by the stress of your calendar, your busy schedule, then you are definitely going to want to join us on this journey as we talk about this issue. So before we go any further, I want you to finish this sentence. I wish that I had more time for dot, dot, dot. What is it for you? What is it that you wish you had more time for? Is it family? Is it for yourself? Is it to do some chore around the house, to paint, to mow, to whatever it is? What is your dot, dot, dot? You know, if someone said to you, are you truly enjoying your life? I think a lot of us would respond this way. No, and I don't have time to talk about it. I got to go. See you later, right? That's just kind of how many of us approach life. And you and I both know this. It is no fun to, to watch people live close to the edge with no margins in their life. It is not fun to be around people that have no margin in their schedule, that have no margin in their finances. That, that morally, there's absolutely no buffer zone. That relationally, they, they just don't have time for one another. Emotionally, they're completely drained and sapped because they just didn't have any margin. I mean, look around right now. Look at what this pandemic has caused to people who have been living near the edge emotionally for a while now. The suicide rate in our country is skyrocketing. People are having nervous breakdowns. They're, they're, they're completely losing it. You know, people's tempers are flaring. Because so few many of us have virtually no margin for error in the major areas of our life. And here's the truth of the reality of this. God did not design us to be like that. God did not design us to live a marginless existence. So let's define what I mean when I use the word margin. Well, one preacher put it this way. He said, margin is the amount available beyond what is necessary. The amount available beyond what is necessary. Another preacher defined margin this way. It is the difference between what you have and what you need. What you have and what you need. Well, as we move forward in this series, we're going to be talking about creating margins. And this is why this is such a big deal. Because, and you know this in your own life, as your margins decrease, your stress increases, doesn't it? As your margin decreases and as stress increases, you, by extension, become more self-absorbed. You become more self-focused. You begin to close out other people and other things that are important in your life. And that leads to relationship suffering because relational intimacy decreases as your margins decrease. See, healthy relationships happen within the margins of our lives, don't they? 
When our, when our relationships are healthy, it's because our margins are set properly. You know, in my own life, here's how this plays out. When I get busy, when I get distracted with things, when I am stressed because there's so much that has to be done, Grumpy Todd comes out. Grumpy Todd begins to grump at his loving wife, Kathy. Grumpy Todd begins to get very short with his kids. And the same thing is true I've seen in my, own, in, in my own wife's life as well. When she's busy with work and when she's busy with things that are going on at home between the two of us, we have this short fuse. Maybe, maybe you've had this in your own life. Because you see, busyness is the enemy of intimacy. You, you can't be close relationally when you are so busy that you have no built-in time for one another. And the less time you have for one another, you found this to be true in your own life, haven't you? You begin to get very, very grumpy, don't you? Stress. Stress is huge in our culture today. Stress seems to be constant for so many of us. You know, at times, it can feel like every area of our lives are defined by how busy we are sometimes, right? Have you ever experienced that in your own life? I know I certainly have. I mean, think about this for a moment. How often, how often do you feel stressed because of your job, the workload that you have to do? How many of you feel stressed because of what's going on with your family? There's just so much that has to be done. Kids have their schedules. They've got homework that's got to get done. All this stuff. There's chores around the house. This needs painted. This needs cut. This needs trimmed. This needs fixed. On and on it goes. How about this? How often do you feel financially stressed? The bills. They're piling up. And you know where the money's going to come to pay for them. Money is really tight. There's, there's nothing left for anything else. How often do you wish that you either had more time for yourself because you just need to unplug. You just need to, to kind of get away from it all for a little bit. Or how many of you wish you had more time to spend with the people in your life that you love, your spouse and your kids, your grandkids? Friends that you rarely see anymore. Here's how margins play out practically in our lives. And this is why we're talking about this, because this is so huge. For instance, margin equals the ability for us to show up five or ten minutes early to a meeting. Or get our kids five or ten minutes early to their activities. Because... It has been built into our schedule. We've got a little bit of extra time. Here's how this looks financially. Financially speaking, we have a little bit of fun money left over at the end of the month. We can go out to eat. We can go to a movie. Hey, we can go play at Disney because we've created some margin in our finances. How about this? Margin means we have some distance between us and the things that tempt us, those temptations. We've, we've got this, this buffer that helps keep us from falling into life-destructing behavior. There's these moral margins that we have allowed ourselves to have in our life. These are so important. These are so huge. You know, so many of us today, we need margins in our life. I don't care who you are and I don't care how old you are. All of us need margins. And margins, unfortunately, are what many of us simply don't have. But if we're honest with ourselves, we wish we did, don't we? we we've become, in this culture today, we've become so consumed and so obsessed with just accomplishing the things that we think are important or somebody else has told us are important and are urgent. And we're so caught up in all of that that we simply 
don't have time. And as a result, here's what's happening. We are missing out. We are missing out on the most important things in life. And if you are a follower of Jesus, you need to understand something. God is not glorified in that lifestyle. He simply is not. Because he didn't create you to be that way. Well, when it comes to living a life of margin, there is no better example than Jesus. Jesus' ministry, his three-year ministry, shows us how he lived life on purpose. Everything that Jesus did was intentional. Jesus didn't let anything distract him from his main mission, which was to save mankind from their sins. Jesus was hyper-focused on his purpose, but he always took the time that he needed either to personally take a break or for what was most important. So I would like to share with us today a story from the life of Jesus. Luke, who was a traveling companion of the Apostle Paul and who wrote the Gospel of Luke, records for us a time in the ministry of Jesus where two women have the opportunity to encounter God in the most personal of ways, in their living room of all places. One of them, one of them created margin for this encounter, and the other decided that she didn't have margin. So I would like to invite you to open your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Luke. We're going to be taking a look at Luke chapter 10. Now, if you are watching us online, there is a Bible tab right there. You can click on that, and you can turn to Luke chapter 10 right there on your screen. We're going to take a look at verses 38 to 42. While they were traveling, he entered a village. Now, the village happened to be a small town right outside of Jerusalem called Bethany. Jesus had been here many times. In fact, Jesus had been to this home multiple times. And a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister, Mary, who also sat at the Lord's feet and was listening to what he said. See, wherever Jesus went, crowds followed. And in this particular case, Jesus is at the home of Mary and Martha. And as he is awaiting the meal, there are crowds of people. Some of them are inside of the home. Some of them are outside of the home. And here's Mary, Martha's sister. She wants to be a part of the action because, see, she realizes, hey, listen, this is a unique opportunity. I have God himself sitting right here in my living room. Think about this for a moment. Who is the most important person that you have ever had in your home? I was thinking through this, and it came to me many years ago when I was in elementary school, and I can't remember exactly how old I was. I wasn't all that old. The front doorbell rang, and my mom was overdoing something. I don't know what she was doing, but I went, and I answered the door, and at the door was this this well-dressed gentleman with these dark sunglasses on, shirt, tie, coat, the whole thing, in a black suit. I opened the door, and I said, hi, can I help you? And he immediately threw up a badge. And on that badge, it said, FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Now, mind you, I'm a young elementary age school kid. And the first thing that came to my mind was this. Oh boy, Todd, what have you done now? And I can remember thinking through, what is it? What in the world could I do that the FBI is after me? And the only thing that I could muster up to say was, Mom, the FBI is at the door. I have no idea the look on her face when she saw that because she wasn't in the same room. But it seemed like seconds later, there was my mother right there with me and this FBI agent. Well, it turns out, turns out that a neighbor had applied to go to 
the Federal Bureau of Investigation and become an FBI agent. And so they just were doing a character background check. But I will never forget that scene. I will never forget the pit in my stomach, the, the questions running through my mind. Am I going to prison? Uh, what in the world is going to happen to me? What in the world have I done that there's an FBI agent here? It was, it was, just, it was just very unique. So there was my important person being in my house story. And he actually never made it through the door. But here's Jesus, God in the flesh, in the living room of Mary and Martha. And here's Mary, soaking in every single word that he says. But where's Martha? But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. Here's Martha. She wants to be a good host. She wants to make sure that everybody there is well taken care of. She wants to make sure everybody has something to drink, that there's snacks out, that the house looks clean, that there's enough dishes, and on and on and on. Whatever whatever Martha was, was was involved with was simply distracting her from this reality because her margin was so slim. Here's God in her living room, and she is missing it. And then on top of that, on top of that, she is upset that her good-for-nothing sister is sitting at Jesus' feet instead of in the kitchen helping her. So, she asked Jesus, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? In other words, Jesus, Jesus, listen, can't you see how busy I am? There's all these people, I mean, you're here, I want to make sure, you know, I'm a good host. Can you please tell my lazy sister to get her act together, and to come and help me. So tell her to give me a hand. And then the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. You know, I wondered after I read that, was Jesus just referring to the moment that Martha was distracted by all the things that she had to take care of as Jesus and these others were visiting? Or was there something more to it? Did Martha's life, was this just kind of a microcosm of her entire life? That she had so little margin in her life. And Jesus is reminding her of this. But one thing is necessary, Jesus said. And Mary has made the right choice, and it will not be taken from her. Mary has made the right choice. Two women, same opportunity. One distracted by what she had to do, and one, one transformed Because she seized an opportunity in the moment. One, very little margin. The other had created margin. You know, I don't know who said this, but the quote is this. If Satan, our spiritual enemy, cannot make us really, really bad, he will try. To make us really, really busy. Do you ever find that to be true in your own life? It's not that you're, you know, you're you're out there trying to to be bad and, and to blow it. It's just it seems like you just have literally no time. You know, I think this is common for, for a lot of us. When I go on vacation, for instance, when I go on vacation. It usually takes me 48 to 72 hours to just totally unplug and, and, and to quit thinking about stuff that's going on here at SCC, you know, things that are going on at, 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 in the house and all that. It takes me that amount of time. Do you ever find that to be true in your own life? That it, it, I mean, you go on vacation, and that first day, that first couple days, you're not on vacation. You're still trying to unplug. Or how about this? How about this? How often does this happen to you? It happens to me. My kids, my kids will want me, they'll want my attention. They want to show me what they built or what they drew or what they wrote or they want me to play with them. And I 
am distracted by what I'm doing. So much so that I tell them, I'm sorry, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. Daddy, Daddy can't do this right now. <laughs> what kind of a monster am I? Here's my kids wanting to be with their father, and I'm telling them, I, I don't have time for you. So many of us, we are just so consumed, just so obsessed, so possessed with accomplishing what we think is just so urgent, what we think is just so important. And we are missing out on the most important things in life. I know I'm not alone in this. This is the American way. My kids, they are right in front of me. But I'm too distracted by what's on the screen. I'm too distracted by what I'm doing to put it down for a minute and give them my undivided attention. Do you ever notice that we will put our priorities ahead of what God tells us is important? What does that look like in your own life? Who are you cheating? Who are you robbing? Because you have no margin in your life for what's most important. And that's why over the next few weeks, we are going to have a come to Jesus moment. We are going to be talking about some pretty hard-hitting things. We're going to be talking about some of these deep issues. Why? Why? Because it is negatively affecting so many of us. It is leaving so many of our lives just simply feeling empty. This issue is too big to just ignore. It needs to be addressed. And this is not just a life issue. This is also a spiritual issue. If you're trying to follow Jesus, if you claim to be a Jesus follower, you need to understand that if your life looks like this, if you don't have margins in your life, you need to understand God is not being glorified in your life. Because God did not create you and God did not design you to be this way. It's true. This is a spiritual issue. God's not being glorified whatsoever. In fact, he tells us in Psalms 46 to be still. To be still and know that he is God. He says, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And yet so many of us are so busy that we miss that, don't we? Stop striving. Stop panicking about everything. And recognize God's sovereignty over your life. No matter what happens, no matter what is going on in your life and in the world, God is still on His throne. Amen? Boy, we need to remind ourselves of that constantly, daily, all the time. See, God is in absolute control of even the smallest details of your life and of my life. Nothing escapes His notice. And yet so many of us live our lives as if we know best. We know what's best. But here's what you need to understand. Here's what I need to understand. The choice is ours. The choice is yours. You, as we go through this series, you are going to be tempted to fight me on this. You're going to be tempted to want to do mental gymnastics and argue with me throughout this entire series. You're going to probably say things, you know, like, well, Todd, listen. You just don't understand. I mean, you just work one day a week. You have no idea what life is like in the real world. 
You don't, you don't know how busy my schedule is. You don't know what I'm dealing with. You know what it's like to be me. You don't know the financial pressures that I'm under. You don't know the time crunches that I'm under. You don't know what's demanded of me. You don't know that what's going on with me. And here's all I'm going to say to you. Ultimately, the things that we talk about and the solutions that are presented, it is going to be your choice whether to accept them or not. What happens? What happens when we live a marginless life? Some of us know. We've been there. We've done that. We're doing that. What happens when margins decrease? Remember I said? Stress increases, doesn't it? It seems like every little thing in life stresses you out. It's a big deal. It's affecting people's health. How many of us are on blood pressure medication just due to stress? How how many of us are, are dealing with sleepless nights? We can't get rest because we're just so stressed. My wife comes home from work oftentimes, and my son calls them her grumpy stories. Hey, Mom, you ain't grumpy stories for us today about people that, that, that she comes across that are mean and that are nasty, that are impatient. Why do we get this way? It's because so few of us have created any kind of margins in our life. If your financial margins decrease, what happens to your marriage? What happens in your family life? If you're married, you know. You start fighting. You start arguing. Because it doesn't seem like there's any money. There may not be any money. How about in your time? As your margins and your time decrease, what happens? What happens in your families? What happens in other relationships? As your margins decrease, so does your relational intimacy. Those of you that are busy, those of you that are busy and frustrated, I'm challenging you. When you can't disengage from work because you are so caught up in what it is you're doing, when you can't can't just relax and enjoy what's right in front of you, or the kids wanting to play with their fathers or with their mothers, and you're missing out on what's important right in front of you, how does that make you feel? How does that make the people around you feel? I can remember I was taking a good friend of mine Back to the airport. And it was the last I was going to see of him for a while. And the whole, the whole drive to the airport, they're on their phone. They're, they're emailing people. They're texting people. I'm just wanting to have a conversation. I felt like I had half of their attention. And listen, I'm no better. I feel like my wife competes for attention. My kids compete for my attention all the time. Because as your relational intimacy decreases, it affects everything, including those of you that are following Jesus. It affects your relationship with God. And that's why this is a big deal. That's why this is so huge. You know, I I can't tell you the number of people down through the years that, that haven't been at worship in a long time, and I'll bump into them at the, at the store or see them out and about, and I'll say, hey, haven't seen you in a while. We really miss you. And when I hear back from them, I know. It's just, I 
don't have what? Time. We just don't have time. If you've ever done that, if that's you, you need to understand this is exactly why we're talking about this issue. This problem is just simply too big to ignore. So I'm going to challenge us. I'm going to challenge us. And the reason I'm going to challenge us and hit this hard is because we will all be better for it. But it'll be your choice. I can't make you do it. Jesus told us that when we're stressed, when we're overburdened, when we feel the weight of everything just kind of collapsing over us, He says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come to Me. Come to Me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And then He says in verse 29 something really interesting. Take up My yoke and learn from Me. Because I am lowly. I'm not going to add to your stress level. I'm humble in heart. I'm not going to reject you. And you will find rest for your souls. Have you ever felt so mentally and physically and spiritually exhausted that you didn't know where to turn? Jesus said, you come. I will give you rest for your souls. I will give you peace. I will give you assurance. I will give you tranquility. I will give you rest for your souls. For those of you that are single, this is important because I think sometimes you can fall victims to this the most. Because, hey, you're not tied down to anybody, and you can overload your schedule to the point that you're really missing out on important things in life. And on this Mother's Day, moms, moms, you're very susceptible to this as well, aren't you? You need to make sure that you have some margins in your life so that you don't burn out. And some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, take today off. Take it off! In fact, you've got my permission. You can take the whole week off. You enjoy you time. Now, I know, I know, for some of you, that you are in situations, because maybe you're a single mom, or maybe this this. You just aren't sure how this is going to happen or how this is going to look in your life that make something like this impossible. Listen, I'm praying. I'm praying for God to do something miraculous in your life to allow for this. Because moms, I know how busy you are. I know how much is expected of you. I know how much you expect of yourself. Do not allow yourself to decrease those margins because it'll spill over into other areas. I love what the Old Testament prophet Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 58, verse 11. He says this, The Lord will always lead you and satisfy you in a parched land. Think about that. Parched, dry, desolate, no water, nothing to refresh you. Our lives feel like that sometimes? Sure they do. It'll strengthen your bones. You will be like a watered garden and like a spring whose water never runs dry. Doesn't that sound good? Doesn't that sound refreshing? You know, when you stop living according to the patterns of this world, 
when you stop living in a way that you think everybody expects you to live or even you have that expectation. And you start living according to the rhythms of His grace. You'll never be the same. Your life will be transformed. And that's what I pray happens for each and every one of us as we go through this series together. So, Father, thank you. Thank you for the example of Mary and Martha. Thank you for this topic because we live in a high-pressure, go, go, go culture. And Father, we need to be reminded to create space and to create margin in our lives. So Father, I pray that you will speak to us that you will speak to our hearts and that we will examine our lives making the changes necessary that will not only make our lives better, but that will glorify and honor you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. So please make sure you join us on this. You know, I am so convinced that many people who call themselves Christians are not truly Christians. They're just just pursuing worldliness in the name of Jesus. They're just playing these religious games. Folks, it's a form of idolatry. It breaks the heart of God. See, you and your goals are still on the throne of your life. That's not Christianity. That's not making Jesus not just Savior, but Lord of your life. And if you find that to be true, I'm encouraging you to repent. To say something like, you know, I'm, I'm not walking with Him. Maybe some of you would say something like, you know, I, I've called myself a Christian for a long time. But you know, I'm probably not. Because he's not really first in my life. Life is still about me. Life is still about my priorities. If that is true, here's how I'd encourage you to respond. To just say something like, today I surrender to him. Today, I give it all to you, Jesus. I I don't want to do it my way anymore. I want to give my life, including my time, and my finances, and my moral boundaries, and my relationships to you. Jesus, I need your mercy. I need your grace in my heart, and in my life, please forgive me, and please transform me. And if you will, in your heart, say something like that, and pray something like that, there is no telling what God will do for you. Before we end this, I just want to encourage our church family to take a few moments to thank Jesus for all that he's done in your life and celebrate communion while you're at home. Take those elements, that little piece of bread that represents the reality that Jesus allowed himself to be bruised, bloodied, and beaten in in place of you. That little cup of juice that reminds us that Jesus shed his blood. It's a sacrifice on our behalf. And he did it because he is so crazy about you. He loves us so much so that as his word says, he became sin who knew no sin. Jesus took our place so that we could be in relationship with him. Won't you take a few moments 
and thank Him for that. God bless. Thank you for listening to today's message. If you'd like to partner with the ministries here at Sebastian Christian Church or find a community through a life group, you can visit us on the web at sebastian.church.